Yo, 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 what's going on, y'all? It's Cohen back here again tonight with another episode of After the Buzzer, the show where I recap the NBA games from the night. There is some crazy parody in the league right now. It feels like any team can beat anybody on any given night. It's been super fun as an NBA fan, but there are some teams that right now are on some hot win streaks, and so we're going to go ahead and talk about those teams in particular, including one squad that's starting to make a name for themselves as potentially a contender. Make sure to leave a like and subscribe if you enjoy. Hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on any of these videos, and let's Let's go ahead and get right into it. Of course, the main team I want to talk about in this video are the Brooklyn Nets, who got a three-point win over the Pistons tonight, which in and itself isn't that big of a deal. You know, it's the Detroit Pistons without Cade Cunningham. Basically, anybody can beat them, but with this win, Brooklyn has now won six straight games and 10 of their last 11 to the point where they're 19 and 12 on the season, which seemed unfathomable after the way their season started. It was a complete disaster, and we'll talk about their turnaround in a bit, but let's talk about what happened tonight and what they They've been doing so well. Of course, they're being led by Kevin Durant, who tonight had 43 points, six rebounds, and two assists on 14 of 22 shooting. Just the latest in an absurd stretch for him. It feels like he's consistently dropping efficient 30 bomb after efficient 30 bomb on his way to potentially an MVP candidacy. Right now, he's probably top five in the race, and as the Brooklyn Nets continue to win and win, he's playing some of the best basketball of his career, which is crazy for a guy that right now most people would probably say is a top what 30. 25, 20, maybe even 15 if you're really high on Kevin Durant, player of all time. And yet, somehow at the age of 34, after it seemed like last season, he was finally starting to decline, he's playing some of the most unstoppable basketball he ever has. He continues to evolve as a playmaker and as a defender. Kevin Durant has been a bit hit or miss over the course of his career, but he's starting to get back towards that way we saw him really with Golden State, where he looked like one of the better wing defenders in the league. He's started to rise back up those ranks, and that's a big reason why the Brooklyn Nets have turned things around. Despite all of the chaos that has gone on, the injuries, the, you know, crazy stuff going on with Kyrie Irving, the coaching situation, Katie has remained that one consistent force for them the entire season, and he is the main reason why they are where they are right now. But of course, he does have some help, and the main guy that's giving him that assistance is Kyrie Irving, no surprise there. Tonight, he had 38 points, 6 rebounds, and 3 assists, with 13 of 23 shooting. He's been a monster since returning from that team-issued suspension. He's looking like the dynamic score that we've seen him be over the past few seasons. His efficiency continues to rise up, and he really does create probably the best offensive duo in the league with Kevin Durant. When the two of them are on fire, the Brooklyn Nets are so hard to stop, and they really are such a dynamic scoring duo, but like Kevin Durant, Kyrie is also starting to do it a bit more on the defensive end. Jacques Vaughn has him buying into defense, and he isn't like a you know lockdown defender by any means, but he's playing some really solid on-ball defense. He's getting a couple steals, getting his hand on the ball, poking it away. He's been impressive in a lot of different situations, and that's basically all you need from Kyrie. He doesn't have to be a lockdown defender at the point guard position. You just need him to be serviceable. And if he can do that, it goes a long way to the Nets playing a lot better team defense as they have been doing recently. Durant and Kyrie are, of course, both really clutch, as we saw with Kyrie hitting a crazy game winner, which almost had Michael Jordan vibes against the Raptors a few days ago. The two of them, when they're firing on both cylinders, how do you stop two of the best scores we've seen in the modern era when they're both putting up efficient 30 pieces? And the answer is you really can't can't, especially when the role players are contributing as well. They've gotten some good moments from Yuta Watanabe, who's been one of the most efficient corner shooters over the course of the entire season. Although he's cooled off a bit recently, he's still having some pretty solid performances. You're getting good play from TJ Warren since he's come back, been a solid defender and also giving you some more shot creation. Guys like Ben Simmons, who hasn't been phenomenal as the third star, but he is giving you some solid production when he has played, although he has missed some time. Royce O'Neal's been solid. Nick Claxton's been pretty good in his role. And so the role players are stepping up while you have the two stars playing like this. And ultimately you get consistent wins. Since Kyrie returned from that suspension, Brooklyn is 12 and three. No other team over that stretch has more than 10 wins. That's how much better they've been than most of the league. And they're continuously climbing up the Eastern Conference standings to the point where they're starting to look like one of the top contenders in the conference. Under Jacques Vaughn, the Nets have gone 16 and seven. And also over that stretch, they've been the eighth best offense in the league, the sixth best defense in the league. And they're up to the ninth best net rating in the NBA, despite once again, a horrific start. And I think we need to talk about how disastrous their season began. Steve Nash got fired 
Lazard just seven games in. They were two and five to begin the year. You also had Kevin Durant before the year request a trade. Kyrie Irving also seemed like he wanted out. And he even had that team issued suspension where we weren't sure if he was going to play for the Brooklyn Nets anytime soon or even again with the way the things were unfolding. You had Ben Simmons looking absolutely terrible when he was coming off of his injury to start the season. The role players, guys were getting hurt left and right. There was so much going on with this squad and yet somehow they're once again towards the top of the Eastern Conference. Before the season, me and many others said that the Brooklyn Nets were a real wild card in the East because on paper, this roster makes a lot of sense and could be really, really good. When you have Kevin Durant, Kyrie Irving, and some solid role players, you can expect them to be a pretty successful squad. But there was also, you know, all the drama that was going on, the off the court issues. Could Ben Simmons be healthy? We saw them get swept against the Boston Celtics last year. How good were the Brooklyn Nets really going to be? And right now the answer is they're really, really good. If I had to place them, I would say they're probably a tier two contender behind the Bucks and the Celtics, maybe hanging around like the Sixers and the Cavaliers out East. But the way that they're playing, there's a real chance that they separate themselves and become one of those top tier Eastern Conference teams with the Bucks and the Celtics both struggling a bit recently. Brooklyn has a real chance to continue to climb up the standings with the way they've been playing. Now, despite all this, they do have some issues that I would like to see them address before I truly call them contenders. The main thing is their rebounding is terrible. They're the second worst rebounding team in the league. There's a lot of times where they allow offensive rebounds, they get killed on the glass and have to fight back because of it. Nick Claxton, you know, he's been solid on the year, but I still think they need a better rebounding big. Anybody they could get to help out on the boards would be tremendous. They also, even if Claxton still stays your starting big, I'd want to see them get a backup big. Sometimes Dayron Sharp is getting some minutes and, you know, he's okay every now and again, but if you're trying to make a playoff rotation, you can't really have him be a big man. Ben Simmons, you know, can play some small ball center, but he's also getting killed on the glass. They've got to address that position. I'd like to see them add some shot blocking and some rebounding down low. Once again, as I say for basically any team that needs a center, a guy like Miles Turner would make a lot of sense. I don't know if he's available from Indiana, who we'll talk about later in the video, but he would be a perfect piece there. I would also like to see them get a legit third option. Kyrie and Kevin Durant are both amazing, but we saw last year that when teams double them in the playoffs, there weren't many guys that could create their own shot and consistently produce offense if one of Kyrie or Kevin Durant were doing that. That's a big reason why they got swept against Boston last year. So I don't know if they've done enough yet to address those issues. Maybe a guy like Seth Curry can step up. TJ Warren has looked pretty good. Ben Simmons, you know, can provide you some moments every now and again, but I would really like to see them go out and get a real third shot creator on the squad. A guy like Jordan Clarkson, I think would be amazing for this team. If they can address those two things though, this team doesn't have many holes. So all this to say, Brooklyn has been really, really good. They continue to rise up the Eastern Conference standings and keep an eye on them because if things keep going the way they are, there's a real chance they could make a run for the Eastern Conference crown by the end of the year. And I wouldn't put it past this duo of Kyrie and Kevin Durant. And if they somehow pull it off, it would be one of the best turnaround stories we've seen in a long time with how things began. In some other news, the Knicks faced off against the Pacers and got their seventh straight win. They were led by Julius Randle, who had 24, 14, and 3, 30 points, two rebounds, and two assists from Jalen Brunson, and 24 points from RJ Barrett. They look like a legit playoff team at this point. They've turned things around in a big way, and the main reason is their defense, which I have to give credit to Tom Thibodeau. I've been critical of him as a coach recently, but he's made some good decisions with the rotation, mainly putting guys like Deuce McBride and Quentin Grimes into it consistently, playing these young guys over the vets, because the young guys are playing defense. They're actually showing some hustle and some effort on that end that some of the veteran guys weren't doing. And because of that, they're starting to look a lot better defensively. Getting back to that mentality and identity that they had in that year that they were the four seed, Julius Randle, RJ Barrett, and Jalen Brunson are playing like a legitimately decent big three. If you want to call them a big three, you know, I don't know what your definition is, but they're playing good as a trio. And basically, if those guys are playing as a trio pretty well, you've got pretty good defense from the overall squad. This team's going to be moderately successful. And right now, now they look like a legit playoff team. So shout to them. I really thought they were somewhat dead in the water earlier in the season and they've turned things around in a big way. Then we had Nuggets versus Hornets. And in this one, basically all we have to talk about is the fact that Nicole Jokic had a 40 point, 27 rebound, 10 assist, triple double. Like that is ridiculous numbers. And of course he put his team on his back and got them a win by just four points when he put up those ridiculous numbers. He needs some more help. Guys haven't been consistently stepping up and giving him some assistance, but Jokic is so good. I feel like he continues to get undervalued and overlooked by a lot of people that watch the NBA, but Jokic remains one of the top players in the world and is once again making a legit case to three-peat as the MVP of the league. 
Meanwhile, for Charlotte, LaMelo Ball had 31 points, five rebounds, and five assists. He's looked pretty good since coming back from his second injury, and hopefully he continues on this path. But Charlotte as a whole, they're just not very good. They still need to sell off some of those pieces like Goran Hayward, Kelly Oubre, and Terry Rozier at some point to try and get to the bottom of the conference and get LaMelo a co-star in the draft. The final game I want to go in-depth into is Magic versus Celtics, with Orlando getting a three-point win over Boston, now back-to-back -back wins over them, and they've now won six games in a row. This one was on the back of Paolo Bancaro, who had 31 points, six rebounds, and three dimes. He's been phenomenal so far, and the Magic are starting to look like they could maybe make a play-in run, something I talked about in a couple of my recent videos, but Orlando's looked really good, and the young core feels like they're starting to really put things together. Meanwhile, for Boston, they were without Jason Tatum in this one, but overall, in their last five games, they're one and four. They barely beat the LA Lakers in that one win. They've been starting to slide a lot. They've got to figure things out, because they went from dominating the Eastern Conference to looking kind of just okay. To quickly recap the rest of the games, the Warriors beat the Raptors by 16 points without Steph Curry. They were led by Jordan Poole, who had 41 points, and Toronto continues to look worse and worse by the day. They're just not really performing at all up to expectations. For the Timberwolves, they beat the Bulls and dropped 150 points in the process, led by Anthony Edwards, who had 37, 7, and 11, and Chicago is now seven games below 500, another team to keep an eye on as a potential seller. And then the Lakers beat the Wizards by two off a game winner from Thomas Bryant, as well as a 33-7-9 performance from LeBron James. That's all I've got for tonight's video. Make sure to leave a like and subscribe if you enjoy. Hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on any of these videos. And also comment down below letting me know what you think about the Brooklyn Nets. Do you think they can truly become a contender? What pieces do they need to add if you don't believe that they are at the moment? And where would you rank them in the Eastern Conference? Do you think they're up there with the Celtics and the Bucks, or like me? Do you think they're kind of just one tier below at the moment, but maybe could crack that if the success continues? I appreciate y'all watching. I'll see y'all later. Real one, say it back.